Welcome to the Hustler's Guide to Flow. I'm your host, Marcia Miyaki, leadership and emotional intelligence consultant, executive coach and author, and I'm taking you into the minds of some of the most incredible leaders in the medical, research, business, and yes, even spiritual fields to equip you with powerful insights and practical strategies to level up in business and in life. The next level version of yourself starts now. Today's guest is my dear friend, John Spender, creator of the award-winning book series, A Journey of Riches, award-winning international speaker, movie maker, and coach. But John isn't just a high achiever. He's a soul-centered humanitarian, truly committed to making a difference in this world. In this episode, John shares his story of how he went from not being able to read or write until the age of 10 to creating a hugely successful book series and becoming an international speaker. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today, John. My pleasure, Marcia. My pleasure. Awesome. Okay, so I want to get right in because I'm super excited about this topic. But for any listeners who aren't familiar with you, I'd love for you just to introduce yourself a little bit. Sure. Well, I'm a, I am live in Bali, Bali, Indonesia. I've been here for the last five and a half years. I moved over here for an opportunity to become a trainer teaching NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming in Singapore. And so that contract was for three months and then I moved into coaching and then that basically organically led me to creating a book series and, and now a movie, a movie documentary starring Jack Canfield, Dr. John D. Martini and various other thought leaders in the personal development space. So that's a, a little bit about me. I love traveling. I've traveled uh, I think every continent. But, uh, yeah, I love life. That's amazing. And John, one of the reasons that when I decided to do this podcast and you were one of the first people that popped into my mind is because I really view you as someone who is really doing awesome things in this world, but you come from a place of contribution. And I also get the sense that you're very connected to who you truly are. So you're not getting lost in the physical world. You're living in it. You're playing. You're having fun, but you're not disconnected from who you truly are. So that's why I was just super excited to have you on on the show. And just going back to one of the points that you said is you now have a book series, you are an award-winning speaker and movie maker. But going back to when you were very young, you actually didn't read or write at a basic level till you were 10 years old. So from those beginnings, is your life now at all what you imagined it to be when you were younger or is this just so far beyond that? Yeah, so far beyond that, there's just no way that I'd ever thought that I would be in this position that I am today, especially when I was 10 years of age. I was just so ashamed that yeah, I wasn't able to read or write. I just felt stupid, uh, incapable of achieving anything or doing anything worthwhile. And so I was naughty in school. I misbehaved a lot. And I was just a little bit of a rat bag, actually. But uh, now I just turned things around and now. You know, that was a long time ago. So it was 31 years ago that I was in that situation. And it was kind of like a turning point. A teacher, my favorite teacher, intervened and she called my mom up to the school and spoke with my mom. And I ended up getting tutoring and I really focused. So it became a, a pivotal moment to focus on my academia. And I ended up going to college and started a landscaping business. And did that for oh, about 11 years and I sold that in 2010 and moved into personal development and that all came about just looking at my own wounds, childhood wounds and different things that happened to me that I'd suppressed or was just completely unconscious and unaware about and that it all came to the surface in the different personal development programs that I got involved in and so I was able to turn, turn my life around. Yeah. That's amazing. And just going back to when you spoke about there was a teacher that kind of intervened, would you say that that teacher was kind of the catalyst to start that momentum towards you overcoming that shame? You spoke about shame, and I think that's a really big one. We experience certain things as when we're children, and sometimes we carry that shame for so long, and some people really can't get over that. Like, What was that journey like for you to really you know, bring it to the light and acknowledge it and then grow from that. 
Yeah, it was a long process. It was very difficult. It didn't happen overnight. It was a long period of time. I was self-medicating and all different types of things. My business at one point was just doing like incredible numbers and had a lot of staff and employees. And I uh, basically turned to drugs. So I was self-medicating on drugs and all different types of substances that would just basically help me numb and the feelings, that, different aspects that I was just ashamed about. And that was really the catalyst. So there was deep, small catalysts. I guess the teacher really, that was a, a big catalyst for me to become uh, read or learned and be able to actually study subjects and focus and things like that. But then there was a whole bunch of other things that happened, physical, emotional, and even sexual abuse that I didn't really face and experience. And I didn't even realize it was affecting me so much until I sort of turned the drugs and I couldn't really, I was taking drugs on and off until 2010. And so it was a long yeah. time. And I think I was smoking bongs from 11. And so to really shut the door on that and to have the life that I have now and the understanding of who I am, what I want, what I stand for, what I live for was actually a really, really long journey. It took me a long yeah. time to come to that point. I love that you're sharing that and kind of like the authenticity around that, because sometimes we have this perception of, you know, when someone changes their life around, it was in a moment and it happened in an instant and then they never turned around. And I think sometimes that can be disheartening to people who are still in that journey. Like maybe I do want to change and I'm putting in that effort, but I keep going back. You know, what would you say to someone, what advice would you give to someone who is still kind of caught up in that journey and they have this vision, they want to move forward, but they keep regressing? I would definitely get around people that are doing what you want to do. When I joined a coaching program, it was a year-long coaching program, and that was the huge help because you had people that would train that program that were at a much higher level than I was, and then you had other inspiring coaches it was like a coaching program to be a coach we also had to go through the trainings and programs right and so that was a huge turning point and that's when I started doing a lot of charity work and things as well and that's when I did my actually first speaking I thought I was going to die I drove into Mission Australia in Sydney and I volunteered my time I thought that I was be feeding the homeless or something like that but they had a, a program where you can go in and teach and so they wanted me to teach on uh, personal development subjects. And before I, the words yes came out of my mouth and before I could actually grab them because I'd never done any presentation before in my life. And this was a two-hour class that they wanted me to do weekly for three months. So I just watched a program. It was Tony Robbins' Syntax a Blueprint on how to deliver a presentation. So I watched that and I went in and I'd, on the drive in, I, did, I thought I was going to die. I couldn't breathe. My heart was beating out of my chest. And then things turned around. I was learning NLP at the time. So I was doing the, the year-long coaching program. And I did all the NLP program that they had. And then we had boot camps and things like that. And I was doing the breathing technique on me and then some of the NLP techniques as well. And they gave me some composure. And then I basically, that was my starting point in helping other people and volunteering my time at charity organizations and things like that so that was a really huge help for me as well as helping people that were borderline homeless in crisis situations oh that's amazing Mm. so you said the first time you're about to speak you were like you're about to like pass out i couldn't even say my name i couldn't even talk i couldn't even (laughs) say my name i was petrified yeah So for people that are still really scared, I know it's, isn't it the number one or the number two fear? Like it's, it's up there in terms of fear, right? People just do not like it. It's like that fear of rejection, fear of judgment, all of that. So what was that first initial presentation? Like, did you completely bomb? And then you just had the courage to come back and just say like, look, each time I'm going to incrementally improve. Like what was that first time where you got up there? First class that you taught, what was that like? It actually went so much better than I expected. (laughs) Yeah, it went really well. I'd done some preparation. That was key. I knew my subject. I was just learning it as well. So it was fresh in my mind. And I was was taking my understanding and learning of that to another level by teaching it. It actually was well received. These people that were at the time, they were borderline homeless, crisis situations, medicated to the eyeballs and all different types of substances, antidepressants and all the rest of it. And some of them were a little incoherent. Some of them I could understand, but they were 
when you're trying to change their model of the world, just even a little bit, it brings up a lot of fear. I had one person walk out, but I was prepared for that. And so I handled it really well. Actually, it was a great presentation. And each week, more and more people showed up, the word spread, and I'd have a full room, actually. So yeah, it started to take off. That's incredible. And I think what an amazing place to start. Like I would imagine that would be one of the hardest audiences because when you go to an event, let's say it's like the wellness expo or whatever, you have people have a particular mindset already. You kind of know what to expect. Like these are people who may or may not have kind of been pushed into that room the first time. That would be really intimidating to go in there and try to present to these people. Like I would personally be really scared. So I think that was kind of like jumping in the deep end, you know? Yeah. But that's awesome. Okay, so I just want to go back to everything that you're doing now and you're achieving so much. And for anyone that doesn't know, just to give a little background about how we met is John published the book that I contributed to. I was a co-author mm -hmm. of A Journey of Riches Making Changes where I share my story of what my personal life transformation was. And that was an incredible experience. And that was the first time I really learned of John. And as I got to know him through social media and just like just his consistent presence, you know, he's just an incredible soul. And John has a way of doing things in the world where he can be achieving and all of that, but he doesn't lose a sense of who he is. That's the feeling and that's the energy that I get from him and that I've always received from you, John. So Talk to us about that. Like, how do you do that? Because it's almost like there's these two polar differences of people who are in hustle mode all the time and they, you know, have to be always goal oriented and I need to achieve. And then there's people that are just so much in flow that they almost want to turn their back to it. And it's almost like you've got these two worlds and I feel like you're someone that really brings them together and says like, Hey, you can do all these awesome things and achieve and contribute, but you can also be coming from your heart and you can still be so connected with your authentic self. How do you reconcile these two seemingly opposing worlds and how do you make that work for you? Oh, that's a great question. And well, again, it didn't happen overnight. It was just a step-by-step -step process and it was just something that I wanted to create opportunities for people and then also where we can create value for the world and for readers and create inspiration and people that may have been in you know terrible situations and just need some support or help or people that are at a certain level and want to go to the next level and so the book series really just happened organically and I never would have thought that you know 10 years ago that I would be in the position that I am today that's for sure but I know what my values are and so I'm clear on that I know what I I enjoy to do and so I just make sure that I make time for those things as best as I can so at different times I think sometimes the pendulum swings this way and then it sort of swings the other way and so it's just a, it's a constant balancing act but I do feel fit a lot in and I'm able to do a lot and I think that it helps because I know what my values are and I can pro make the things that are important to me a priority and yeah. so um, yeah I do fit a lot in and I know you can just do a lot. There's just so much you can do when you know what you're working on. And so, do you think that has to do with the fact that you have such a clear vision? Like, what do you think that clarity is around you? You spoke about values. So, is it about having the right knowing what your values are and then living authentically to that and also having a vision? Like, how is it that you're able to? do that is it you're checking in with yourself to make sure hey I'm a little bit too much in work mode right now or hey I'm actually not being as productive as I could be how do you because it's something that I personally this is why this topic is so interesting to me because it's something that I personally work on all the time yeah is being able to be in both spaces of being able to do a lot while not getting super caught up with it so is it do you have a practice that you use or a ritual that you kind of just kind of check in with yourself to make sure that you're still fully aligned with your values like how do you do mm -hmm. that yeah, I can just see like sometimes during the day I can feel that like my emotions are getting out of control or like different times I can get so much in the zone that my adrenalines can, they're just really excessive and I'm, I just feel unbalanced and I can just feel myself unbalanced and I maybe feel like a little bit annoyed or I'm getting like, I don't know, just uncomfortable. 
And so I'll do like a meditation. So I do a breathing meditation. So I do a lot of circular breathing. I might do a meditation for seven minutes, 11 minutes. And that really helps me to like calibrate my emotions and just really drop out of the beta state, like which is really that go, go, go type of state and really just drop into theta state, which is just more calm, relaxed. So it's a different frequency of your brain waves. And so that really helps like course correcting during the day. I have clear goals, things that I want to do. I also have do affirmations. So that really helps. And I love spending time in nature. I love traveling. So I make sure I make for that. And the structure that I live in so that basically I'm forced to travel. I'm forced to go to do these different things because that's what I'm involved uh, with. So everything sort of interlinked and, and crosses over. So different opportunities I do that requires me to travel to different places. And it comes down to like asking yourself quality questions, like how can I get paid to do this? How can I get paid to travel? How can I combine my travel and work? And so a lot of questions that I asked myself. It took a long time. I, I invested like over $150,000 in programs and traveled all over the world and to really create like a base that I could create from. So I now have like a blank canvas. I also have a vision board. I speak to the different people that I want to collaborate with on the vision board. So I have these imaginary conversations that then create the reality. And so I do a lot of visioning and I see myself doing the things that I want to do. That really helps. And so there's different laws of the universe, just like gravity, that when you do them, that, you know, it's like when you drop something, right, it has to go down. And same when you do the visualization and you see it, then it has to happen. It's amazing. Yeah, I love that. And you just, the way you were speaking there, just seems like you're very self-aware and you're very like in touch with yourself, checking in, checking in, checking in. Yeah. And I know that you coached, you know, a range of people from, you know, as you were speaking about the borderline homeless and people that were in drugs, et cetera, and then also the very wealthy people. And then speaking about the beautiful life that you created for yourself, where you have this balance that works for you of the work and the pleasure What do you think that people are seeking in regards to coaching? Like, what is it that we're all after? Like, like why is it we have this trend happening now where people are seeking more freedom and we're moving away from that old model of life? Why do you think that that's happening? I think innate in every human being is wanting a sense of freedom, is definitely wanting that. So working when you want to work and contributing, having a sense of value and importance and that you're helping and supporting other people and what you do actually matters and getting paid for that rather than actually having to sit in traffic, you know, get up at a certain time, you have to start at a certain time, you've got to finish at a certain time. It doesn't have any flexibility at all. And a lot of people are miserable by that. I know when I felt I had to do something, I mean, it's, it's not nice. Uh, even now, I mean, I still have to do things and I'm like, I'm not jumping up and down and going, year P, but it's um, more because it's a choice, you know, and it's just something, it's more part of like when I'm actually doing it, when I'm actually there, then it's like, yeah, right. Like it's awesome. But, you know, sometimes you're emotional creatures. So managing our emotions and coming from a place of emotion and intelligence is a constant, it's something that I'm always learning to do and course correcting. And I have my moments of frustration and, and anger and I experience a broad spectrum of emotions just like anyone else. Uh, It's just I don't stay there so long. I can let go of things a lot quicker than I used to be able to. Awesome. Yeah, and to your point about people don't want to continually do things that they don't want to do. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, they don't feel like they've got a purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the space that I'm in as well with in terms of working with organizations. There's lots of really competent people that can can be contributing to your organization, but because you haven't given them a purpose and because you're so rigid in the way that you're structured and all the hierarchy and the bureaucracy that you're losing great people and people are searching for something new because where do they align? How are they contributing to the greater good? People want that sense of contribution. Like I feel like it's innate within us. So mm. I would definitely agree with that. And yes, to your point, even as an entrepreneur as yourself, and you're doing all these amazing things and you love your life, but there's always elements of stuff that you don't feel like doing too, that you kind of just have to do. And that they're like your chores, you know, of your work, that yeah. they're not the most exciting bits, but you still have to do them. And then as you were speaking about having that emotional regulation and that emotional mastery to say, okay, this I can get annoyed. 
I can maybe not enjoy all aspects of my work, but I can get back into alignment and then keep going. So I, I love that so much. Okay. So jumping back now to the book series, how many are there now? Uh, there's, we're just launching book 13. Wow. That's so amazing. And this one is called Finding Love and Gratitude. Uh, discovering Love and Gratitude, 10 stories that will open your mind and heart. Oh, I love that. Can you share a little bit about that? Like maybe a particular yeah. story or just anything on that book? Well, one of the authors, uh, she's from Indonesia and she was an air hostess for Air Asia. And her best friend was involved in that plane crash that from Singapore to Surabaya and that she was part of the care crew. And so she knew all the crew and she used to fly that route actually. And then she moved only a month before. And so she changed to a different uh, route. So she stayed in Surabaya. She would have been on that plane. And so she shares how that experience, she had a lot more appreciation for life and valued her friends and family and She was meant to catch up with her best friend that was on that flight a week before, but she just thought, I'll see you when you get back. And that never came back round. And so there's a lot of heartfelt stories like that. So that's one that springs to mind. Another one about anxiety, how a woman from the Middle East, she was a marketing head for a, a large company, a large marketing company. They were dealing with a lot of big brands, restaurant brands. And she basically had like an anxiety, just severe anxiety attacks that led her to moving to Bali, taking a year sabbatical. And now she helps other women to empower women. And so that's a beautiful story as well. So there's 10 chapters in this book. And when are you launching that one? So it's launching on the 6th of September. So there'll be the 5th of September in the US and everywhere else will be the 6th. Awesome. And it's available on Amazon? Amazon. Yep. Ooh, how exciting. Congratulations. That's yes. so awesome. Yeah, so I get to collaborate with amazing people like yourself as well. I've now collaborated with over 170 different authors from 33 different countries. Wow, that's so amazing. So tell us more about the film that you made. You talked a little bit about that. Can you share more about what the key message you wanted that one to be about? Sure. Well, it's a movie documentary, and the key message is that there's a, a benefit or a gift to the adversity or the challenges that you're experiencing in life right now and that they're leading you to a better place. And sometimes we're left looking at a closed door and we don't see the open door or the opportunities that are always surrounding us. And so it really goes deep into that. And we've got some amazing perspectives from different people. And then there's a movie part. So similar to The Secret and What the Bleep that we know, that there's actually live actors. So I'm working with an up-and-coming Hollywood director, James Cullen Brashek, and it's going to have a bit of an edge to it. There's, you know, some people go through, the strength of the human spirit will really come through. People go through some dark days and we're going right into those dark days and showing them and then coming out the other side. And so people get a whole picture of, you know, what happened to this person. They're not just someone that's now this best-selling author and they go around the world and speaking to groups and all the rest of it, but they've actually some adversity really led to them to be in that situation. And so we show that. Oh, I love that. Is the story about you? Is it your story? Uh, One of my stories is in it. So there's my story. There's Casey Pluff, you know, Casey Pluff, how she was a stripper. And so it basically goes into her life as a stripper in the club. And then she spent two weeks in a penitentiary. And now she's a seven figure network marketer and she helps, you know, mums and stay at home mums and all the rest of it uh, live a, a free life and live life on their terms. So there's a lot of stories like that. And there's another oh. uh, man, he went to prison. He's actually from Perth, actually, Mitch Behan. He lives in Perth now, but he was a drug dealer and he got caught. He went to prison for, I think, two years or he might have got out early for good behavior. But he was started teaching, had this epiphany before he went in and, and had this moment of inspiration that just led him to tears. He calibrated who he was in this world and he was teaching people, inmates in prison and then he came out and now he's doing that. He's uh, got a very successful seminar business in Australia. That's so awesome. And I love how you said you're acknowledging the dark. 
And I really love that because you're so right. A lot of the times when we see like really inspiring people or we watch their videos and we hear them speaking, you just think that they've always been this person. And if you are someone who has struggled, it's hard to relate to them. And it's hard to see how this can be possible for you too. And so I really love that because you're speaking to such a broad and maybe like a forgotten audience of people who need that level of inspiration. And yeah, I love that message. That's so awesome. I'm so excited. So is there a release date on that one? We don't have a release date as yet, but uh, sometime in 2019 is the plan. We're just going through the process. Yeah. So very exciting. I've been working on it for about three years now. And I was met oh another director the other night at Dojo in Changu in Bali. And I was telling her, oh, you know, it's just taking a while. And she goes, how long have you been working on it for? And I said, three years. She goes, my first full feature took seven years. I was like, really? She's like, yeah. But I've heard so many stories like that. Different directors, yeah. their first one taking a little bit longer. And so it was a dawning experience. The idea just came to me and it wouldn't go away. It just kept coming back. And so now I found myself traveling around the world, interviewing these amazing people. And so it's just some incredible stories, amazing films. It's going to be epic. Yeah, I'm so excited because first of all, I love those types of stuff. Like what the bleep do you know? I love that one, how it was the informational, but then took you right in as well into the acting side of things. So I love that. That's that's going to be amazing. So congratulations for that and for all the work that you're doing. That's so incredible. Okay, so before I ask my last question, where can everyone find you? How can people reach out? Uh, they can reach out through uh, Facebook. So I have a Facebook, at John Spender, Journey of Riches, or on Instagram, a Journey of Riches. Yeah, guys. And I'll also have all the links in the show notes as well. So I'll have all the links included in here. And you're going to continue with the book series, I'm assuming. With The, the plan is to do 101 books. So sort of work with over 1,000 authors. So that's the goal. Awesome. So guys, if you are thinking about writing your story or sharing something or writing a book of any kind, you know, where you want to share something, definitely get in touch with John. He's honestly just such an incredible guy and he's so easy to work with and the team is so easy to work with and they literally do everything for you. You just share your story. They'll give you feedback. They'll take you, you know, step by step through everything. We'll make it like super easy and enjoyable And one of the things that I really loved about it, John, was just connecting with all these amazing people. You join this really beautiful network of inspirational people, guys, and just talking about what John spoke about earlier about, you know, surrounding yourself with really amazing people, you know, especially if your current cohort is not really inspiring and you're finding it really challenging to kind of like level up, you know, an opportunity like this will definitely give you that. Also, it's like people from around the world too. So you connect with all these people. Like Casey Buff, one of the people that John spoke about. It's also, I'm close with her as well now. And it's like, I would have never met her. And she was also a guest on our show. And I would have never met her if I hadn't co-authored this book with John. So definitely guys. And one of my favorite quotes, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but I'm going to try anyway. It's like basically every superhero has a story, yeah. you know, and it's up to you to write your own. So regardless of who you are, you have a story within you, you have something to share, you know, let it out and definitely reach out to John if you think you want to do that, because it'll be such a great experience. Okay, John, so for the last question, what is the legacy you want to leave? That's a great question. So I basically, the legacy I want to leave is um, books that help people to transform and inspire themselves and live life on their terms. So the whole 101 books, there's bound to be one book that will resonate with someone out there in the world and also with films and is really just to inspire and give people hope for and inspire them to take that chance, to take a risk and to do something that absolutely scares the living daylights out of them that will take them to a next level. So to help people to evolve and expand on their journey and then also to get involved. So all the books, all the proceeds from every book goes to the Bali Street Kids Project. We also donate to Bark as well, which helps dogs in Bali. And so we basically give to many different charities. And so I'd like to be involved in more humanitarian projects on a larger scale and then also 
turned degraded like so really barren land, deserts and just farmland that can't be used anymore into forests. So I'd love to, there's some research now that's coming around. You can actually turn deserts into forests. So with trees and habitat for animals and really like to have a reserve that uh, helps endangered species, endangered species of animals and mammals. So that would be my legacy. I like to be known for. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that. So guys, just listen to the last few seconds of what he just said. Not only, you know, does he doing all these things to contribute with the book and the movies and et cetera, is that he still is allowing himself to dream massively and all of his goals are about serving others. Like, that's so incredible. John, I just want to honor you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Uh, It's an honor. Thank you so much for having me, Marcia. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, I hope you got some powerful takeaways from this episode. If so, please share it with someone. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and review as it helps us to spread our message of inspiration. Sending you so much love and I'll see you on the next episode of The Hustler's Guide to Flow.